Let me show you that no matter the size of your outdoor space, you can grow your own produce at home. Hello and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Michael and I love to talk all things gardening. And in this series, we're going to focus specifically on small scale gardening. So I have my paved area here off my back deck, which runs at about four meters by three meters. So perfect if you only have a courtyard at home or even if you just have a small balcony in whatever, uh, wherever you're living in a flat or an apartment or something like that. I'm here to show you that growing produce should not be limited to just having a big backyard. So let's get into it. In this area here, I have a range of raised beds and also pots and a little seating area. So firstly, let's take a little tour and then in future videos, we'll see how things progress and grow. We'll remove things, we'll replant things. So make sure you like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all future videos. Here we have one of three raised beds that I have in my small paved area. This one is two meters by one meter. So that's three foot by six foot. I'm trying to do my conversion there for those of you that don't live in Australia. It has a selection of some warm season crops. So I'll show you what I've got currently planted. Here we have two varieties of eggplant. This one is called Listata de Gandia, which is a quite a round purple and white striped eggplant. And at the back, we have one called Black Beauty, which is very similar to the one that you would usually find at your supermarket. Over here is some basil. In the middle is two capsicum plants called California Wonder. So they're yeah, quite big green and red capsicums and you'll see some more basil because you can never have too much basil. More basil, more basil. And on the end here we have two tomato plants which are called Tasmanian chocolate. These are determinate varieties of tomato which means they'll only grow to about a meter, three feet tall. So they're good compact varieties which are perfect for small spaces, perfect for pots. So if you have limited space, make sure you look for determinate varieties of tomatoes. This bed is a little sparse. I could add some quick growing crops between the other plants, things like lettuces, um, radishes, things that I could dot around in between and they will grow and be ready to be picked before these get too big but I definitely do also need to add some flowers. So something perfect for pollinators, something like marigolds or calendula will go well in here. So keep an eye out in a future video to see me add some flowers in. This is the second raised bed that I have. It's the most compact. So it's only about a meter, just over a meter in length and about 50 centimeters wide but you can still fit quite a good amount of stuff in there. And I like it because it is on wheels. So if you have limited space, but also if you have limited sun, something that's on wheels means that you can move it around and chase the sun if you need to, because your veg likes ideally six hours of sun a day. Uh, at the minimum, you're looking at about four hours of sun. So you just got to keep that in mind. Put the locks back on so it doesn't roll away. But I want to show you what I've got growing in here. So we have another determinate variety of tomato in here. I can't remember what this one is called. Let's have a look. Uh, patio. Yeah, it's called patio. So obviously perfect for a little patio courtyard or balcony some flat leaf parsley because I don't like the curly leaf parsley but a flat leaf is good some chamomile plants so you can make your own tea dry the flowers brew your own chamomile tea 
at the front we've got some chives, some garlic chives, some spring onions, which are good additions to your cooking, some oregano or oregano, depending on where you are in the world, and on this side we have some thyme. So for a small growing space, I can still fit quite a bit of stuff in here. Pots are the perfect option if you only have limited space and resources because you can get pots quite cheap. So here I have two blueberry plants which are looking happy and healthy. There's even some flowers that have just gone over. I might get some blueberries. And this one here is looking a bit leggy, needs a bit of a trim back, but it is my mint, which smells amazing. So mint should always be planted in pots. They will run, they'll take over your bed. Don't put them in your garden. Don't put them in a raised bed. Keep them contained, otherwise they will just go crazy and you'll have mint forever. You'll never be able to get rid of them. So I'll just cut this down and it'll just reshoot from the base and it will look happy and healthy. This one here was for an ornamental. It's supposed to be my Japanese maple, an Acer, but I don't know that it's made it, so I might have to pull this one out and think of something else to plant there because it is quite shady in this corner spot here. And there's a couple of self-seeded nasturtiums which I'm happy to leave because they provide some colour. And you can eat the leaves, you can eat the flowers, and you can even eat the seeds of a nasturtium plant. On this corner here I have a large wicking pot which has a dwarf mandarin who says you can't have fruit trees if you have limited space. So this will grow perfectly in this pot and in the front I've got some echinacea plants which I grow mainly for the flowers but you can use the flowers in things like teas and it can help with colds and flus. This is the last of my three raised beds. This one is directly on the ground. It is full of winter veg that needs to come out. Here's a whole bunch of broccoli which has gone to flower and seed. This is coriander, which the pollinators love the flowers, but I'm going to pull it out because I need it. There's leeks in here too, which I need to pull out before they go to flower. Otherwise they're not, they don't taste as good and some overwintered jalapenos in the back there. All my beds are wicking beds, which means they have a water reservoir in the bottom and the plants can draw up the water as they need it. Wicking beds are a great option if you only have a courtyard or a balcony because the water is contained. So you're not gonna have overflowing water dripping and you know maybe dropping down into, into your neighbor's uh, balcony or, or yard or anything like that so that's a good option for you um, if you do have a limited space and lastly no garden is complete without some sort of compost just because you have limited space doesn't mean you can't have compost here we've got a big compost tumbler where you can turn your compost go all the way around it has two chambers, so you can fill one up. Once that one is full, you can let it sit and break down and turn into compost. Whilst it's doing that, you can then start filling up the second chamber. So that's a good way to be able to compost with just a small amount of space at home. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there for now. Join me again next week. And I think we're going to pull out all the stuff in this bed and plant in some new things. If there's anything you'd like to see me plant into these raised beds, be sure to let me know in the comments. And we'll see you next week. Ciao.